One thing about Reznov that I've learned from fighting by his side for so many years is that this man will not let you die. Reznov will literally pull out one of his best motivational speeches in the worst time possible. And I mean that in a good way. You find yourself laying in a fountain of dead Russian soldiers while the Nazis clean up any remaining survivors? Don't worry. Reznov is about to give you a five-star tutorial on sniping. You almost drown in a Berlin train station? Well, guess what? Boom, Reznov. Captured by Nazis? Boom, Reznov. Fidel Castro sends you over to a Russian labor camp and you're about to get your ass beat? Boom. Victor Reznov. Today though, in honor of one of our greatest leaders, motivational speakers, and simply somebody we consider family, we're gonna sit back and take a look at every moment we got to see Reznov after Vorkuta. <laughs> Uh-huh. Two kills, actually three kills, and he's giving me the shotgun. So the year is 1968, and we get deployed in Vietnam. Specifically, Mason gets deployed in Vietnam. We wind up entering what is known as the MACV building. Of course, like many of these operations, the goal is to gain intelligence. Supposedly, the person with the information that we're looking for is who they're referring to as the defector. Originally, I didn't know what this meant, but the defector or defector is basically a person Person who has abandoned their country or cause in favor of an opposing one. Before the mission starts, you hear the interrogator say that the defector was surely dead and then Alex Mason responds by saying he wasn't dead. The reason that Alex Mason thinks that he wasn't dead is because Alex Mason thinks that Reznov was the defector. Now correct me if I am wrong because first of all we know Reznov is a hallucination, second of all there is a dead body that's laying against the desk inside this room. Room. I'm assuming that that dead body is the defector. This winds up being somebody that was killed during the attack on Huey City. Yes, it is Huey City, not Hugh City. I don't know. The pronunciation is very weird, so I could be a little bit off, but it is not Hugh City. I know that for sure. The information that we find has to do with Dragovich and his plan specifically. This might be the time that a lot of people were confused because once we bust into this room that has the information, Reznov quote unquote winds up saving us. Now, a lot of the times when you see Reznov, it is of course a hallucination which means most of the time you can just assume that mason is the one that's doing the killing even if you do see something completely different the point of the game was to give you the experience of hallucinating so we literally see reznov and he's the one that winds up handing us the folder of course something else that can kind of give reznov away is that you always get that number sequence playing in your head whenever he's around or he's about to show up once moving outside of the building and regrouping with your two teammates you'll notice that reznov does speak but your two teammates do not address reznov or even acknowledge Reznov. Are these your men? Woods, Bowman. I am Rez. What took you so long, Mason? They didn't tell. Better be worth it. Lima Niner, where the hell's our pickup? They simply just talk to Mason and then continue on with what's happening. Looking back, it's very obvious, but of course, if this was your first playthrough, you it would be really hard to pick up on stuff like that. Or even if you did, you might think it's weird, but you won't you won't really know for sure unless you're the guy in the comments that knows everything. Next on the list, we have Victor Charlie. In the villages of northern Vietnam, we're searching for evidence of Soviet presence. Presence. which once again let's be honest we're looking for dragovich we're looking for krivchenko and how does the mission start we start off in a downed helicopter what a surprise as the helicopter starts falling deeper into the water mason needs to make an escape we head over to the door having trouble opening it of course but mason does eventually open it but what do we see we see that reznov magically shows up again and he's helping us open this helicopter door another thing with these hallucinations and the times that they show up it's a perfect way to show what reznov has instilled in mason almost any time that mason is facing one of the most difficult dangerous life-threatening events that is when he sees reznov and i think that simply gives him the power to get through it once again reznov is never acknowledged by anyone else besides mason sergeant woods is very capable you have chosen your men well mason i will move to high ground to look for krushenko's compound 
Understood. Stay close, Victor. I will work my way around. All right. But move quietly. What the fuck's wrong with you? Now moving on to the third time that we wind up seeing Reznov. We're entering the 10th mission in the Black Ops campaign, February 11th, 1968. Once again, playing as Alex Mason as his SOG unit attempts to find a crashed Soviet cargo plane containing Nova 6. What the hell, Reznov? Bro, where does, Ma where does Reznov come from? We now move on to the final time that Mason sees Reznov. We arrive to a Soviet base established in 1948 as a secret Soviet bioweapons facility. All of this, of course, located on Rebirth Island. Mason arrives by himself to carry out Reznov's plan for revenge, while at the same time, Weaver and Hudson are leading an attack on the island with the goal of extracting the Soviet allied former Nazi scientist Friedrich Steiner. While we Weaver and Hudson may need him alive because they want information about the number station. Mason has a completely different goal. Mason 100% is here with the intentions on killing Steiner, one of the three people that Reznov wants dead in his plan for revenge. Now, of course, for Mason, he remembers Reznov being there, being with him, and Reznov being the one that kills Steiner. When the roles are reversed, though, you wind up playing as Hudson and seeing it from their point of view. Hey, revenge! Mason, no! I'm fine. Check Steiner. He's dead. What about Reznov, the defector? We need to find him. We won't. As you can see, Hudson winds up saying we won't because Hudson knows that Reznov was not real and was not the defector. As for Reznov, there's a lot of different speculations that people make. Did Reznov just ride into a storm of bullets unleashed by the prison guards? Or did all the guards just stop shooting once Mason jumped on that train and they kept Reznov alive? Now, if you know anything about Vorkuta, it was one of the most well-known gulags with the reputation of being one of the worst. The number of people that died was estimated to be 200,000. I really doubt that Reznov magically lived. I've almost come to the conclusion that maybe there's more than one Reznov. This man might just have clones. You have a theory that Reznov is still alive and he's going by the name John Trent. Emails from John Trent can be found in the Black Ops 1 computer. Even the numbers that pop up in between missions can be decrypted. When decrypted, you can read Reznov is dead or is he dead there was no body is he who he says he is then you even have reznov being seen in black ops 2 all of that honestly can be very confusing there's a youtuber that goes by the name ink slasher and i have to give him props he made a very good video talking about reznov and if he was still alive and there's honestly just a lot of very good information in that video i think that's about it for me though so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video let me know what y'all think about reznov or if you guys have have any secret information that I have not heard about.